If you're looking for a small multiband receiver for your camping expeditions or MCOM bag, stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of gadgets that catch my eye. In this video, we're going to take a look at a small but capable multi-band radio that will work great as the take-along radio in your RV, backpack, or bug-out bag. It's called the Ratty RF75A. Now, I need to let you know that Ratty provided this radio for this review, and I really appreciate it. Before we jump into a tour of the radio, I need to mention a couple of the key features that are both similar to other radios in this form factor, as well as some that I think set the RF-75A apart. The radio uses a display screen to show tuning information, bands, and its various functions. That means features like sleep timer, alarm clock, and selecting the FM broadcast band for your part of the world are all easily accessed. It has AM, NOAA weather channels, FM, and reception in the VHF band from 30 to 200 megahertz, as well as shortwave band coverage from 4.75 to 21.85 megahertz. Unlike a similar small form factor radio I've reviewed on this channel, the shortwave bands are divided into groupings that make skipping through the bands easy with just a touch on the little orange lock key. The RF-75A also accepts a micro SD or TF card, so you can carry around tons of music. What really sets the RF-75A apart from the crowd in this category is the very cool Bluetooth function that allows you to use the RF-75A as a Bluetooth speaker, but even more impressive is the phone app that allows you to control the radio from your smartphone. Let's take a quick look at what you'll get and do a quick tour of the radio and the app. So here's the box that the RF-75A comes in. Let's take a look at what you're going to find inside. The first thing we'll look at here is the uh, what they call the operational guideline. It's the owner's manual, and it goes through a description of all of the features, tells you how to make changes, gives you explanations of the various icons on the screen, and so forth. For uh, a small radio, it's a pretty good little manual. Along with the manual is an app instruction manual. This gives you the QR code for Android, if you are going to use the included Bluetooth app, it's called Radio-CT. Or if you're using an Apple device, you can download it directly from the App Store. The Radio-CT uh, guide shows you uh, the various steps to get the um, device paired with your radio and a display of the screens. And we'll look at that more closely here in just a minute. Now the radio comes with some accessories. I've got them laid out here. One is a nice little bag that you can place the radio in to give it some protection if you're keeping it in your pack or uh, go bag. It has a nice little earbud type wired headset that uh, plugs into the radio itself. There's a USB-C charge cord. And then this is the wired antenna that you use this little alligator clip to clip onto the radio. And this extends out about 10 feet or so, greatly enhancing the uh, radio's ability to receive shortwave signals. And then the last accessory is just a wrist strap that will uh, work through the hole on the little radio and then you can keep it snug on your wrist to avoid dropping it when you have it out and about. So let's take a look at the radio itself. Let me bring in the uh, Ratty RF750 radio and so you can see uh, the 75A is a little bit taller, but it's quite a bit thinner than uh, the uh, 750, which is a very similar radio also sold by iRaddy. So let's take a look at our 75A. So if we look at the top, we see that we've got the screen right here. There's an on-off switch 
uh, switch that uh, you can use to change the bands. You can, it's a double function switch for memo and set. This is the volume up, this is the volume down. On this side, you have the tuning up and the tuning down. On the back, uh, it's just got some information about the radio and its uh, uh, specifications, the band coverage and so forth. And then on this side is a little switch that will turn on the flashlight, which is an interesting addition to this radio. I'll show that to you in just a second, uh, as well as the slot for the micro or TF style um, memory card. And then last but not least, back on the front, this is the speaker. And then this is the little orange lock button that we'll use to uh, skip through the shortwave bands as opposed to having to scan through, you know, thousands of frequencies um, that some of the older models forced you to do. And then here on the top, here's the loop for the uh, wristband, the USB-C input, the input for your head wired headphones, and the uh, flashlight LED there on the top, along with the extensible antenna. And as you can see, the top sections in particular are really very narrow. So uh, when collapsing the antenna, it's always best to grab it by the bottom near where the radio is and just kind of feed it back into the slot as opposed to trying to push it down where you run the risk of breaking the antenna. So let's work through with the power on to see a couple of the features. A quick button will turn the uh, radio on. Here's the weather band, so I've changed bands. A quick press on the band button changes it to Bluetooth. We'll look at that more in just a minute. Here's the FM broadcast. Not sure you can see the number. It's very easy to read in person. This is the um, lower VHF band. It's at 94.1. As you can see now, there's really not a lot happening in this band. It happens in 2017. So let's say that takes This is AM. Right, right. That and then this is short wave. And to change the short wave, you can see here that it's uh, on 20.965. If I press this little orange button, now it's down to 5.6, 7.35, 9.9, And so you can see that maneuvering through the bands is a lot easier using that button. You'll also notice that you can assign the colors for each band. It comes out of the box with uh, the colors that you just saw. So Bluetooth is blue and here shortwave is green, for example. Now, to change frequencies, we use the side buttons over here. And so it will go up 15805, 15810, a little bit at a time. Or I can press and hold that button and the radio scans. Press it again, the scan stops. Press down, it goes down in uh, five kilohertz increments, or I can press the down button and it scans downward. So that's a quick overview of uh, most of the buttons. I guess the two I forgot were volume, so I can press this to turn the volume up. There's a volume indicator right there. Now I can press it down and then there's uh, that volume indicator comes back on. Now, one of the interesting things I notice is at the top, there's a little box that says lever, L-E-V-E-R, and then it has dots across the top. Well, I think that's just a misspelling because I think it's the level, L-E-V-E-L, -E and those dots indicate signal strength. So uh, that's kind of an overview. Uh, the instructions talk about how to set the sleep timer and how to set the alarm clock and the clock time. So I'm not going to go through that here, but you can see what those... Uh, various buttons uh, do and and how they work. So let me set up my phone and my um, Bluetooth and show you what the phone app looks like now. So here we have the app connected to our little RF75 Alpha. You can see here on the screen it's 1100 AM and over here on the radio it's also 1100 AM. When we press the band button on the, on the radio, bands change. Same thing here. So now you can see it changed the shortwave 
This is weather. This is FM. By the way, I've got the volume off so I don't uh, uh, mess up any copyright things with YouTube here. And the, um, the VHF there in the uh, 30 to 200 megahertz range. And then we're back to the AM. The other thing we can do is we can just directly key in frequency. So press enter and we'll go 1250. And you can see the radio changed to 1250 over there. Uh, so we don't have to scan or go up and down, although you can. So if we wanted to go down, we can press the down button and you can see that it goes up and down here. And so across the top, you can see that we're in AM modulation using a five uh, bandwidth and then the uh, various other indications and the volume is down there at zero, which is where I have it uh, turned off. Now up here, I've got the controls. And so if I was using my TF card, I could use the stop and start there with the pause button. Uh, I could turn this into uh, streaming music from my phone uh, with that Bluetooth button. Uh, and then I can begin a scan if I want to as well. So if I press scan, it starts to scan through the channels. And then I can press it again and it'll stop. Or I can press scan. And then when I hit a frequency, it'll, it'll also stop. And so uh, band changes frequency. Um, and then uh, let's do that. Let's go up to... Uh, the weather channels, if I want to go up to the next one, uh, I can do that, work my way up. I uh, may want to scan to grab the weather channel that's broadcasting in this area. So I'll press scan and you can see it's flashing alert. So that means I can set the radio to broadcast a weather alert when the National Weather Service uh, broadcasts alert for the area that I'm in. Now, the other thing then, uh, I can do is press this little icon here where it says band WB and then it'll give me a list of the bands that I have available. So instead of scrolling, I could go right to where I wanted to go. So for example, if I want to go directly to FM, just press FM and you can see the radio changed and it goes back to FM. It tells me it's wide FM at the top with a 200 uh, kilohertz bandwidth and uh, some of the other information available. Again, the volume's at zero. And then down here, I can set alarms and sleep timers. So all of this makes using the RF-75A really easy. And if you're like me with big fat fingers, uh, manipulating these little buttons can sometimes be a challenge. And so making use of the app and all the extra space available to you uh, makes the app really something that sets this radio apart. Here are some audio clips I recorded outside. I use the long wire antenna that came with the radio as shortwave reception is always better with a wire than with the extendable antenna. The extension antenna works pretty well, but the wire is able to pull in a better signal. When using the wire antenna, extend the internal antenna just enough to grab it with the wire's alligator clip. So let's listen into a couple of uh, broadcasts in a variety of bands here. So the first one we're going to start with is just the plain old broadcast band in AM. Architect is to synthesize those ideas into a set of design solutions that are appropriate for the neighborhood. The, the on. On Back Road, just west of Here's FM broadcast. Okay, so let's see what we can find in the shortwave bands. We'll search through here. It's 7.3 megahertz. Here's 7.5 megahertz. Sounds like an Argentina station here. That's at 5.6 megahertz. Here is weather for the local area. 
at about 162 megahertz. Wednesday, mostly cloudy with a chance of showers in the morning. So, what'd you think? I thought the radio's ability to pull in traditional broadcast stations was very good, and the sound quality was also quite good. The VHF weather channels came in loud and clear, and even the HF signals were more plentiful than I expected. HF signals are influenced by the time of day and overall band condition, so they can be sometimes a bit of a crapshoot. During this session, the lower frequencies were coming in quite strong. I really like the small form factor multiband radios, and the RF-75 is no exception. Its sleep timer, alarm clock, and really cool Bluetooth capabilities make this fairly inexpensive device a keeper. For me, I think this one's going into an emergency comms kit. If you'd like to see my review of this radio's little brother, join me over here for a review of the RF750 Retro Radio. And, as always, please like the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Thanks for watching.